All right, once you got your airbag released, to disconnect it, you all you do is you pop up this little retainer right like that, and then you just very gently get your screwdriver underneath and pop it loose. It'll come right off. Make sure you disable your airbag system before you do this, but definitely pull the airbag fuse up before you do this if this is uh, something you are not familiar with doing. Otherwise, you could have an airbag go off in your face, which would be no fun. Um, so once this, once your airbag is off, you want to take off the center nut here. Um, it's a 21 millimeter or a 13 16. Most GM vehicles are this size, unless they are a Torx. Um, once you do that, you get your steering wheel puller and pull the steering wheel off. You just simply thread your puller into these holes here and push against this center shaft. It'll pop it off. You also want to take off the red horn connector here. You just want to push in slightly and turn to the left about a quarter turn. It'll pop right out. Um, if you don't do that, it will break these things. Um, they're kind of fragile, so be real careful with them. I've already got the steering wheel loose, um, so I just pop it off. Uh, you should probably be a little more careful than I just did. I already had the thing loose, but uh, you want to gently pull it off and then feed this harness through that hole um, before you uh, just yank it off like that. Um, the next thing that has to come off is your SIR coil, your airbag coil right here. Um, the only thing that holds on is a small retaining clip right there. Um, just use your uh, snap ring pliers to pull that off. Like so. Now you can see the, the harness runs back along here into this clip. A lot of times there's a zip tie that holds this thing in place. All you gotta do is snip that zip tie, give yourself a little bit of slack, and then gently pull this thing off the shaft. Now be careful not to let it turn. You just wanna keep it in the same spot. If you turn it too far, you can damage the coil. And I just let it hang there. Uh, the next thing that's got to come off is this little copper wave washer. Slide that off. And what you're seeing here, this is your uh, retainer plate and this is your turn signal cancel cam right here. It's also the uh, horn contact um, for your horn. Now you will need a special tool to get this retainer ring off in here. It's a uh, you can see it kind of inset. Um, what you have to do is you have to push this. There's a large spring behind this uh, cancel cam. So you need to push this plate down towards the base of the column. You can get that snap ring off there and then everything will come off. Uh, you do need a special tool to do it. I will grab it here in a second show you how it works. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about has how to get this plate off right here. This is your lock plate. Um, it's not used in this vehicle because there's no steering wheel lock, but other vehicles, this is what actually locks the steering wheel when you turn the key off. Um, so you will need this adapter plate. Uh, it's a GM tool. You might be able to fabricate something, but it just basically slides on there like that. And you want to center it once you get the tool on there. This is the tool that's needed to get the uh, retaining ring off there. Um, all this tool does is compress that plate enough so you can get down in there, get that retainer ring out of there, and then release the tension off it, and you can pull everything off. So uh, this just threads on the steering column shaft here like this. And then once you got it tight, you tighten that nut, and it compresses that plate. All right, so now I got the tool threaded all the way on the shaft. It's completely seated uh, right here. And then once you've got this center section tightened, then you just snug up this nut right here. And all it does is push on that plate. So we'll get in here with our wrench and we'll just, don't go too fast. You will feel tension start on it. You don't wanna go past that point. So once there's some tension, you just stop. The plate's compressed. You can see there's a little gap in there now. And you can get that retaining ring out of there. The best thing to do um, that I've always found works real well even though it's still a pain in the butt, is get a pick down in here and get behind the ring. 
you can see the ring moving there like that. Get the pick behind the ring, get it pulled out of the groove, and then get in behind it with a uh, straight screwdriver and just pry it off the shaft. All right, you can see right here how I've got the ring out of the groove. I've slid it all the way up, and the, it can just stay on the tool until you're done with it. But essentially then all you do is you just loosen up your nut, slowly release the tension on that plate. And then you can take off the tool. Take your tool off and then your lock plate. It is indexed into the shaft only goes on one way so um, take that off and then your turn signal cancel cam can come off you can see there's the copper plate there that rotates around on that pin right there for your horn and then once you got off you can see your spring here that pushes against it it's a pretty pretty hefty spring you can leave it on there now here is the ignition cylinder case this is what houses your ignition cylinder here um, your pass lock sensor connectors right here it plugs in to the pass lock sensor right here these pass lock sensors fail the voltage just kind of goes haywire on them and won't let the vehicle start so the only thing that holds this case in place is this couple torque screws there's one here one here and there's another one that comes in from the back side you can't really see it but it's back here um, if you shine your flashlight in there you should be able to see it all you do is you take out those three screws and then uh, knock off your ignition switch. This is your ignition switch right here on the bottom. There is a hole here and here. And there's just two little tabs in there. You just push in here to release one tab, put downward tension on it with your other hand, and then push in and release this other tab. Um, and then the thing will slide right down. I've got the ignition switch released. You can see these little, these little, uh, locks here that hold it into the case they're just a little spring-loaded thing and all you're just doing is pushing it in like that through these holes to release the switch um, make sure you have the ignition switch in the same position throughout uh, don't move it because uh, it is a gear switch and you want to make sure it's indexed properly when you go back together so um, you you can release your your buzzer switch which is up here you just come in from the top. All right, once your ignition switch is out, you can see the gears on there that mesh into the gears that are inside your case here. Like I said, you want to make sure that everything get indexed properly. Uh, right now, the ignition switch itself is in the off position, which is the position that the key was in when I pulled the switch out. So just make sure you don't rotate that. Make sure that your ignition cylinder is in the correct position. And once you reinsert the switch back into the case, everything should be uh, lined up properly. The next thing that has to happen is your ignition uh, uh, cylinder can come out, your lock cylinder. That's uh, fairly straightforward. All you do is you rotate the key all the way to the start position until it stops. Um, there's a small hole right in the top of the case right there. All you do is you put your pick in, hold your pick down at the same time, and then the cylinder will slide right out just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the uh, case off. I'm going to take out the three Torx screws and I'll show you that here in a sec. One other thing I forgot to mention too is your uh, your, sh your cable here for your uh, key release has to come off. Um, this little retainer, this little white retainer right here is, pops off um, just like that. Oh. Let me get the camera on there. It just pops off just like that. All right, now that we got the case out, you can see that there's one last thing that holds it in place here, and that's the cable here that, uh, that uh, this is the cable that won't allow the key to turn off if you're not in park. Um, so all you do is, once you got your, uh, your case off, this cable will not come out 
until the ignition is in the off position. Um, remember we had to turn it on to get the cylinder, the lock cylinder out. So we need to basically go in here um, with a large screwdriver and rotate that back to the off position and then this cable will come right out. Okay, so you just get your big screwdriver in here like that and just gently rotate it back to the off position. It's as simple as that. You push in here with a pick or a screwdriver and then the cable will slide right out. And there's your housing right there. Um, it bolts on there like this. And here's that other bolt hole I was talking about. You just come in here with your T25 Torx bit and take out the bolt and that's your housing. Your pass lock sensor is right here. Um, the sensor senses the magnet that's in the cylinder as it rotates past and sends a voltage to the body control module and allows the vehicle to start. That voltage has to be the same every single time. Otherwise, uh, if it changes, then uh, the car thinks you're trying to uh, manipulate the voltage and uh, thinks you're trying to steal the car. So these sensors fail quite a bit. Uh, more so on like the Grand Ams, the Aleros, the old end body cars. Um, so we're replacing that because this vehicle won't start. So, so here we've got the new housing. The first thing you want to do is put your screwdriver in there and rotate it all the way to the off position, um, which is counterclockwise. Just rotate it until it stops. This will allow us to put our uh, cable back in. And that just slides in there and snaps in like that. And once you got it in, you can put your screwdriver back in there and rotate all the way back to the crank position so that we can reinsert our uh, lock cylinder. It only goes in one way. There's a tab on there that lines up with the groove. Slide it in. Sometimes you do have to slightly turn, slightly turn your thing in there, or the uh, switch in there to get the to get it to line up, and there it goes, just like that. All right, so now we've got the new uh, new case in place. Um, you want to hand start these uh, machine screws here because you don't want to cross thread them. They're extremely fine thread. It's really easy to do. Um, so just hand start all of them with your torque socket. And then the one on the side as well. Sorry for the unsteady camera, I'm trying to do this one handed here. But yeah, you can see your other bolt hole right there. Now that you've got all of your screws uh, machine screws started, you can snug them up. Don't go too tight on them. There we go. I also took the lock cylinder back out because the, the guy's uh, cylinder was worn out. The old cylinder was basically worn into the old case and when I put the old cylinder in the new case it didn't want to turn so I had to take it back out and we're going to replace the cylinder on it as well so um, once you got uh, your case back in you can put your turn signal cancel cam back on like that the pin basically goes in like the uh, about the 10 1030 position like that your lock plate retainer can go in place like that like I said it only goes on one way and then your plate adapter and then your special tool can go back in place thread is on the shaft to compress the plate I need two hands to do it so I'm going to set the camera down here um, but yeah like I said as previously noted in the video you just thread this on the uh, center section there or the center shaft of the steering column compress that plate and slide your retaining ring back down into the groove.
So again, you just tighten up your nut here until you just feel tension on it. You don't want to go too far. You can see the groove there where the pin is going to go. Um, and then essentially you just slide it down. You don't want to stop in that groove. You want to keep going down to your next groove. So just get your, uh, get your screwdriver and Not used to doing this with one hand, guys, so bear with me. Sorry with the camera. Now a lot of times that retaining ring will get stretched out when you take it off, so when you release the tension on the tool, you want to make sure you apply inward tension on that retaining ring so that it stays in the groove. So I'm going to apply inward tension on it on both sides of it and release the tension on the tool so that it seats properly in that groove. Alright, um, as you can see here, I've got the ring seated in the groove. Uh, you want to make sure it's seated the entire circumference of the shaft. Um, sometimes you've got to release the tension a little, bit, a little bit on this and then kind of just tap it in there with the screwdriver. Um, like I said, those rings get stretched out pretty easy. And even if you take them off and shrink them back down, they still get stretched out when you, when you expand them over this shaft here. So that's the biggest pain in the butt about this job is this, is this uh, retaining ring in here. So once you've got it in there, you can release all the tension by loosening the nut, and then you can take your tool and your adapter plate back off. And I'll do that here real quick and come right back. All right, the next step is going to be to put our ignition uh, switch back into the case. Um, make sure that uh, if your cylinder is out, that the, uh, the, the plastic piece in here with the gears on it is in the off position. Um, the only reason my cylinder is out again is because I'm replacing it. Uh, there, it's being coated right now. But um, if the cylinder is in place and the key's out, it should be in the off position. So then all you got to do is you got to just slide your uh, ignition switch back up in the case until it locks into place, like that. Give it a little tug and make sure that it's locked. Make sure your retaining tabs are snapped back into the holes. Everything's good. All right, the next step is to put your copper wave washer, washer back on. And then you can put your SR coil back on place. Uh, make sure you line up the pin through the center there from your cancel cam. And then you also want to line up this tab here with the tab on the case there. So just rotate it. Get everything lined up. Like that. And then you can put your, um, your snap ring back on with your snap ring pliers. It's kind of a two, uh, two hand job, so we'll just release it and then push it back on like that. Once you got it near the groove, you can just kind of push it until it snaps. Okay. Make sure it's locked all the way into the groove. All right, and now we need to uh, get our um, our key buzzer switch in place. All you do is you push it down into this hole like that, and then snap it in like that. You can plug in your your pass lock sensor wiring like that. And now you can put the trim covers in place for your um, steering column, These the upper and lower trim pieces. Um, they just snap together, nothing actually attaches them to the column. Um, the two pieces just snap together with these clips on the edges there. So You can see I've got the upper in place, I've got the boot in the groove, um, it's fully seated, now we can get the bottom one. Alright, now that we got the cover snapped back in place we can put our tilt lever back in um, I forgot to tell you guys how to take this off all it does is pull out um, 
sometimes uh, they come out real hard. You could get a rag and wrap the uh, wrap the knob with a rag and pull it out with some pliers so you don't mar it up. But essentially, it just it just snaps right in here just like that. Your tilt lever. So, um, and I should also mention that tilting the column up and down will help you greatly getting these covers back in place. Or you can also pull off the knee bolster here. That that will give you some more room as well. But um, usually you can get them in and out of there just fine without having to pull it off. So uh, the next thing will go back in place is your steering wheel. You want to feed your SIR wire harness through that center um, hole there. And then put the steering wheel back on the shaft. It's indexed to the shaft so you can only go on one way. Now you can see on the steering wheel right there in the center of the screen there is an arrow. That arrow lines up with that little line on the end of the shaft. Like I said, it only goes on one way. Um, and it's indexed to the shaft. Um, so uh, don't be worried about getting it like a tooth off or anything like the older cars had. Um, the line and the arrow, just line those up and it will slide right on. You can put your uh, horn harness back in. Just push, push down. Turn the quarter turn to the right. You can test your horn by pushing right here on the center section. All right, you can put your nut back on and torque it to 30 foot-pounds. So to reconnect the airbag, all you do is connect it back in there like this. Just push, snap it in, and then put your retainer back in place. Hook the harness back in the upper clip here. So it's out of the way, like that, and then your airbag just snaps back in like that. All right, we're going to talk about uh, programming the theft system on this 2002 Avalanche. Um, this vehicle had the pass lock sensor replaced. It's part of the ignition case, the lock cylinder case. Um, the sensor itself had failed. The vehicle would not start. Um, so anytime you replace a component, whether it be the body control module. Uh, the pass lock sensor, um, not a key. Um, you basically have to relearn the system. There's two ways to do this. The first way is the 10 minute procedure. You need a special scan tool through General Motors and the General Motors service programming system to do this 10 minute learn. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably don't have that or access to that. So the best way to do it then would be the 30 minute relearn procedure. And what that entails is essentially you put the key in and you attempt to start the car and what's happened here is a security indicator will be on for 10 minutes um, it should be on here there it is right there it'll flash for 10 minutes after 10 minutes that security telltale will go out at that point you want to turn the key off and wait five seconds and do that procedure again for a total of three times or 30 minutes. At the end of the 30 minutes, you turn the key off, you wait five seconds, and when you attempt to start it for the fourth time, it will learn that voltage from the pass lock sensor in the body control module. The vehicle should then start. Of course, you wanna make sure that your battery voltage is constant, uh, 12 volts or more, while you're doing this programming procedure, because if the voltage falls, the procedure will fail. Um, so again, make sure you've got your 12 volts uh, at the battery. You can hook up a battery charger or a booster pack or something to maintain 12 volts or more during this procedure. Uh, any questions or comments, please uh, don't hesitate to comment. Uh, send me a message or whatever, and I'll try and uh, get some more videos posted up here in the future. Thanks, guys.